Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. My producer did inform me our guest is on the line. I'd like to welcome the program author Susan Deitch. Uh, Susan, how are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for having me, Neil. Absolutely, Susan. And just to give you what picture what's happening right now so that you don't – we have – Two co-hosts, Eric Remmel from Life Improvement Radio, who we're powering live from right now, and also my uh, social media manager and co-host, Peter Elvich. So, Susan, I just kind of want to know more about who you are than they already are coming up with all these great questions for you <laughs> based on the research I provided them and all that stuff. So they spend that time, and I'm trying to get to break my record this week, Susan, the number of people I've interviewed. So. Uh, I, I don't. I, uh, Peter's going to have to do that talk. But go ahead, Susan. Tell us your background. Um, well, I, I live in New York City, and um, I've lived there for many years. Uh, I teach at Hunter College in New York, at the City University, and um, I live with my cat and my son. Well, and what else can I tell you? Okay. Well, what about so you're a teacher? So that's that's your background. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I teach so writing as well as doing my own work. Yes. Yeah, so if you're if you're if you're teaching writing, you got to get you got to get published, right? So that your 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 students say, okay, uh, she's she's putting out what she needs to put out. Now we got to produce and learn from her, right? Is that the kind of way, Susan? When you're teaching creative writing, I hope so. You better yeah. Than yeah. Than books. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially in New York City, you're getting a lot of aspiring uh, authors, aren't you? In your class, yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, it's, uh, writing it's more. still, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Go ahead, Peter. Ah, all right. So, um, my first question is just it's a fun curveball. Uh, what is something you know, with all, all the things you have written, what is something that you uh decided it doesn't make the cut and you didn't finish writing it? Um, well, there was a book that I, I was interested, I, I started and I spent a lot of time on and it involved a lot of research. Um, and it, it was an incident that happened in the like, 17th century. And it was just, I, I found that period was a little oppressive, even though it was an interesting story. So I, I didn't finish that project. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. What's been your favorite project to date? I see that you've written, you know, a bunch of short stories. Is there anyone that stands out in your mind? Um, well, I just finished um, a thriller, which is a digital download called White Lead, which was just made live um, a few days ago. And that was a lot of fun to work on. It was very, it's very action driven, very plot driven. And I had to think about how I would get characters out of difficult, physically difficult situations within the city of New York, which is a city I know very well, has a lot of places that might be difficult to get in and out of, rooftops, subways. So it was certain physical challenges, which was very different from things that I've written previously, and that was a lot of fun to, to work on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, absolutely. So let me go uh, uh, right into when you talk about New York City in general and mm-hmm. the physical of this, I kind of understand that as well in that process that, you know, it's navigating a big city like that is a challenge, isn't it? At times. It is. And the city has changed a lot, I guess, in the same way Miami has changed. And um, it's some of the areas or the kinds of people that were very interesting a generation ago have been marginalized, have moved out. But I think there are still corners, still pockets that are very authentic and um, that you can still write about that are still interesting. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, out of the experience that you've done, you know, writing different uh, projects, what is, like, would you go back and change any of them, and how would you do that? Um, well, I think my first, maybe some of my first books, I would have maybe picked up the pace a little more. Um, I think we always, or at least I am one of those writers, I think I would go back and rewrite um, a lot of what my earlier work was. I would go into all the houses with scissors and whiteout, but we can't do that. So I think that looking back, there are always things that I would change. 
Gotcha. Okay. New work on the horizon. Do you have anything that, that you're uh, currently working on, you know, it's going to be next month or a couple months or maybe even next year out? Yeah. I have a, um, another thriller that I finished. It's the second in this series. Um, it's called Vermeer's Ghost. Um, that's the second to – the first one is White Lead, one that was uh, just came out about a week ago. Awesome. You know, um, when, when you think about uh... – writing and, and and why you write books and why you love writing and why you love teach teaching writing how many of your students in some ways uh have aspirations like you have or are in that struggle that understand what writing's all about cuz Susan writers are different than other people i mean i i coach a lot of them in my social media and branding business and uh, provide coaching and business when they first try to get their books out and different things. What do you see from young writers that you work with on a regular basis and what, they're, what they bring to the table and how they can uh, uh, develop their craft to have success and be published and, and, or write for magazines or newspapers or, or other publications? Well, I think they all have those aspirations. Um, but I think what the the question is it's it's really it's a, writing is a discipline it's just a job like any other and you either you either have to um, you know get up in the morning and go to your computer or um, or not you know and, and you have to kind of demystify it so it's not like waiting for the lightning bolt of inspiration to hit you it's just it's a process it's like a job it's like going to a gym you just keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. For um for like your, the different writings that you do. I'm just wondering, is there ever been uh, any personal connections either to the characters or to the characters' names or anything like that? Yeah, I think that um, my work is pretty much not autobiographical. I, I pretty much only invent what I write about. But I think there's a way in which personal information comes out in devious ways. It just sort of percolate through um, in in the way they solve problems. Um, I usually always write from the female point of view. I find it very hard to to do otherwise. Um, so there are ways in which it becomes personal, although initially it's, it's not. It's not with Seleucidir, the Lost Civilization of Seleucidir, the, my book that was um, just published um, in, in July. It's uh, Seleucidir is ridiculous, spelled backwards, and it's about three different archaeological digs um, in different periods of time looking for a lost city, and I'm not an archaeologist, but I think the way in which um, some of my characters react to situations is probably similar to the way I would. Gotcha. All right. Now, I know you were talking just um, about your book, about how, you know, there's archaeological expeditions, you know, and, and different things take place. Do you find that you're getting a lot of uh, inspiration from current day activity since, you know, the Middle East or, or a lot of those countries are pretty much at the tip of everybody's tongue with, you know, political states and, you know, yeah. news media and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a lot of those sites and um, things, art sites are being destroyed, artifacts facts are being lost. Um, so, yeah, it's very much, um, not all of my book is contemporary, but the the situation in the moment is definitely something I've been thinking about. All right, Susan, where's the best place we can find information on you and learn more about you? Where can we go? Um, you can go to susandh.net, it's Susan, and my last name is D-A-I-T-C-H dot N-E-T. Awesome, Susan. Enjoy the rest of the book fair, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. You too. You listen to Author's Corner, powered by Life Improvement Radio, uh, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as advice from Life Improvement Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, or editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Life Improvement Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.